Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachining.org. Guys, today we're back to work over here on my Monarch Model 612 Metal A that we need to get up and going for an upcoming project. This has been a long-term restoration project for me. This machine brought into the shop when I built my shop about seven or eight years ago. And I started restoring it, but never really finished it, mainly because I just haven't needed it. And there's always been other things that have been a priority. I've got a job coming up that I need it, so I'm trying to get the last few little things done on this. We've already done a few things, but today the what I want to work on is the tail stocks, uh, or tail stock, I guess, on this uh, lathe. Now, when I purchased this lathe, it did not have a tail stock on it at all. Um, and I knew that when I got it, but it was a fairly nice machine, and I just decided, you know what, I was going to take a chance and see if I could... Uh, adapt a tail stock to fit it. In fact, the previous owner had two tail stocks that he had found. They really didn't fit it, but I think that his idea was he was going to adapt one of them to it. I got those two with it. Uh, since then, uh, I've picked up these two tail stocks, uh, and I've picked up two for a reason. We'll go over that in just a minute. But these, both of these tail stocks are not exactly for this lathe. They came off of a Monarch lathe model either 60 or 61 i'm not sure which they both took the same style headstock this is a model 612 so it's basically the next generation past the 61 61 and uh, they did make a few modifications uh, the bed is just a half inch wider uh, but these still fit on the the bed and they still line up on the center uh, both of these are a little bit on the low side they were for a different height or a different swing lathe uh, again, I think we can do some shimming and make those work. This one here is really close. I mean, it's within probably less than a half an inch uh, to the right height. But here's the challenge. And, and I'm going to zoom in here on this first one and show you what we got. And then let's show you what we're going to be working on today. So this first tailstock here is a really nice uh, tailstock. Um, this one came from a viewer who had a, uh, a lathe that he was scrapping for whatever reason. I think it was up in Michigan, and he pulled this off and saved it for me. The problem with this tailstock, other than, again, the height being just a little bit on the short side, which we can work around, uh, but this one had the option on the spindle here that it has a built-in center. Uh, it does, does not have a Morse taper in it, which I really need a lathe that has a Morse taper. So this one here just had a center built into it and it was dedicated. This was an option that Monarch had that you could buy them when you, when you bought a new lathe. And for whatever reason, that was the option that was on this one. Uh, we need the, the, ver, uh, the, the quill in here that has the Morse taper, which brings me to the second uh, tailstock that we have. Tailstock number two, uh, came from a, a viewer, I think it was in South Carolina, maybe North Carolina, it was somewhere in the Carolinas. Uh, he had gone to a local scrapyard. They had a, again, a model, it was either 60 or 61 lathe, and they were getting ready to scrap it. And he saw it, realized, hey, maybe Keith can use some parts off of this. He said, hey, do you need any parts? Even though mine's a little bit different, a lot of the parts are still interchangeable between the 60, 61 versus the 612. Uh, I said, each shot me a picture, showed the, the, the tailstock here, and this one has the spindle that has the Morse taper adapter. Now, if you look, it's a shorter tailstock. It's even shorter than the one above. This one is gonna have to raise up around an inch if I wanted to use it. But really what I think I wanna do is just swap the quills if I can, and I'm pretty sure I can. I'm pretty sure they're, they're the same. Uh, we just need to get it out and swap it, uh, and then you know, the rest of this will probably just end up in the scrap heap, unfortunately, but uh, I think that's what we'll do is we're just gonna try to get this off. Now, I had tried very briefly when I got these tail stocks to just get them apart, and I was running into a problem where they just, I was just figuring, hey, we'd screw these things out, they'll come right out the end, move on with life. Uh, found out quickly that it kind of went and they hit a stop and they wouldn't go past a certain point on both of them. And at the time, I just kind of, okay, I'm not going to worry about this right now. And here I am however many years later and now it's time to worry about it. So I need to figure out how to get these out. And I think I've done some, I've done some research and I think I've figured out what we need to do. So uh, I'm going to bring you around to the other side and show you what's going on over there. So we're looking now on the backside of these uh, same two tailstocks. 
and both of them have this little round plug in here. And I did some homework. I pulled up the parts manual for the Model 61 lathe, and it shows that this plug pulls out and it looks like there's kind of a key built into it. My thinking is, is that there is a keyway in the side of this and this kind of keeps that part from rotating. Uh, when you're cranking it in and out, it makes it run straight so it doesn't actually turn inside of the, of the piece. And I am thinking that there, there's gonna be a stop on the end so that it'll only go to a certain point when it hits that piece that it's not gonna allow that to, to, to pull out any farther. So it'll kind of prevent you from unscrewing the quill in normal operation. But in this case, that's what we wanna do. So I think what we need to do is take these out, pull this plug out, and uh, hopefully then we'd be able to unscrew it the rest of the way. Keep my fingers crossed, that's what we're gonna try. So let me uh, see if we can get that out. Just socket cap screws. There's four of them that hold this uh, plate in. Take these out. Now, I need to pull this out and there's a grease zerk in here. Let me see if I can get something to pull on that. Look at there. And yes, there is a large key in there. We got some shims in here, some brass shims or maybe they're not brass, but shims nonetheless. So now, now maybe that will come out. Maybe, let's, uh, let's try it and see. All right, let's see what happens this time. does appear to be going out farther than it has been previously. It seems like it has unscrewed. Aha, look at there. I think we got it. One spindle quill out. And I've got the plug off the back of this one. This one does not have a handle on it. Let's see if we can get it to screw on out some more. It's still, this one is hit hard. Hmm. All right, that is screwing it in. There's nothing on the end to hold it in. See if I can pump it back in. I'm just hitting that with a lead hammer so it shouldn't be damaging the front of the spindle. Hmm. Ah, this one is uh, <laughs> full of crud like rust. It'll come out and we're just gonna have to, I'm not sure what we're gonna have to do. Let me, uh, let me put on my thinking cap and see what we can do here. Maybe if I take that end piece off, we can unscrew the rod and Press it down on the hydraulic press. I don't know, let's see. So this little end cap should screw in and unscrew. So what I'm going to do is there's a little, little hole down here in the bottom. I should be able to maybe tap that and get it loosened up. Maybe. Oh, 
It is moving. All right. All right, that will, will work. It's not exactly the right size, but that's what these spanner wrenches are made for, is doing this right here. All right, lots of rust in there. Now we should be able to unscrew this. <laughs> this thrust bearing in there is froze completely up. Here's the screw. Take some penetrating oil, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. I got a block of wood here. There shouldn't be anything holding that in. I'm just gonna see if I can knock it out. I'll tell you what, let me, I'm gonna make a mark on the end where I can see if it's coming. Put a little mark right there. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Hadn't budged. All right, so I'm thinking that the problem may be is right here, there's a big handle on the top, you tighten down, and this kind of has a curved section that sandwiches all this together and it locks that quill into, into place. And it is tight as a tick in there, it's not moving at all. I think this may be stuck and be kind of clamping it in place. So what I've got is a uh, tap, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap the inside of this hole where I can hopefully get a uh, bolt down in there and somehow or another kind of jack that out so that I can loosen it up. Uh, that's my thought. We're gonna give it a try, see what happens. This is a seven eighths inch I think it's eight threads per inch, if I remember right, tap. <sighs> Just like everything else, it's not budging. Maybe, maybe that'll help. I'm gonna try one more time. See if that makes a difference. So I pulled this off and we just got the top part. I had disconnected it from the bottom piece so I didn't have to bring the all the weight over here. We picked it up using the uh, engine hoist and I brought it back here in the back shop because this is where I had the gantry crane set up. I moved my press back here up underneath it. Right now we do have this suspended from the gantry crane. Um, it's not going anywhere if it falls or whatever, it's, it's supported. Uh, I've also got a, it's sitting up on, on a couple of uh, one inch thick blocks on the bottom. I've got a parallel here, kind of supporting it to keep it from tipping over. 
and we've got it set up ready to press. We've got 30 tons available to us. Hopefully we won't need anywhere near that. Also up under the bottom, I've got a bunch of cribbing so that when that rod comes flying out the bottom, hopefully it's not gonna hit the concrete. Hopefully we can control it a little bit. We'll see. I'm gonna basically get out of its way because I just don't wanna be too close to it. All right, uh, here goes nothing. <laughs> full stroke it is uh, on the wood up underneath the bottom now I'm gonna let that retract a little bit I actually may need to pull one of these boards out that I'd put up under the bottom because it's on that right now let me see what's going on here I didn't do that with the gantry It's still not all the way out. So um, let's uh, all right, let's uh, do another press here. I think it fell out that time. Yeah. Retract our ram. got it out now. It fell on out the rest of the way. All right, good news. We've got the wheel out of the one that was stuck and it does not appear to be in bad shape. I was worried that there may be some pitting or something like that on this uh, spindle. Of course, we pumped, no telling how much uh, penetrating oil down in there. So by the time it all came out, it was lubed up pretty good. Um, and I don't see any pitting or anything like that. Uh, just a quick glance at them. They appeared to be identical, which I expected them to be. So uh, they should be able to just swap them out, which was my game plan all along. So game plan now is I'm going to get these cleaned up really good or get the new one cleaned up really good. Uh, there's still some junk and gunk in here. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is pull the whole tailstock assembly off of the lathe over there and get it on some saw horses and start getting that cleaned up and painted. Uh, we'll let the paint dry probably overnight and then we can install this quill uh, once the paint is dry. So uh, anyway, on to the next uh, step here. All right, we're gonna start taking everything off of this again. So first off, get this hand wheel off. I just wanna get it stripped down where we can get it properly painted. Whoops. You can see the handle up here on the top that operates that clamp that we uh, had to pull out of the other one. I'll just pull that out. 
think I want to go ahead. These clamps here are what clamps this to the bed. It just basically sandwiches. So when you tighten these nuts up, it uh, clamps some pieces that come across the bottom down here. And <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a modification to those. I can tell already because there, it's not quite long enough on this particular lathe bed. We'll worry about that in a bit. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can drop those off. Yep, just moving that forward to get it over the hole where the bolt will drop out the bottom. So I've pretty much pulled off all the little small parts and stuff off this tailstock as I can. And also pulled it off the lathe we got over here on the sawhorses. Next up, what I want to do is I'm going to get in here with a wire wheel. We're going to get all the old paint and crap and crud, everything cleaned up off of this thing and more or less get it ready for paint. Uh, from there, it's probably going to go back onto the lathe. I need to get the spindle installed and I need to figure out, I know that we're going to have to shim this thing up a little bit. It's really close to being on the right center for this lathe, but it isn't exactly where it needs to be. And I need to figure out exactly how much we need to raise it up and come up with a game plan on that. I think that what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be applying some turkite up underneath the ways and that will pick things up just a little bit. Like I said, I don't think it's off by much and we can um, do that with just some wear strips up underneath the ways and take care of the little bit of alignment issue. Uh, but I'll know better on that once I get it back onto the lathe uh, after I get it cleaned up and get the, the, the quill reinstalled where I can get a good measurement on how much higher we need to go. All right, I'm gonna get the angle grinder out and we're gonna make a mess. Got this casting pretty well cleaned up. So next step is uh, back to the lathe uh, with this whole assembly. And uh, I want to get it on there and check the height like we talked about a minute ago. So we're going to pick it back up. I'm just using the uh, engine hoist here. Gantry's in the other shop, so I don't really have access to it in here right now. Got it back on the machine. All right, I have come over here and uh, with a rag and stick and got up all inside this uh, bore and cleaned it out as good as I could. And I want to just uh, put a little oil in here best I can just to have some in there for lubrication. And now I'm going to go get my quill and uh, slide it up in there. All right, on the quill, I have come in here and wire wheeled it all, cleaned it up real good. Also, there's a little hole right here in the top, and on the parts breakdown that I have for this, it says that's for an oil wick. So I put some little cotton batten in there, and uh, hopefully that will help. Uh, keep this thing lubricated a little bit. There was nothing in there when I started. It had all completely rotted out. All right, we are in. Now I need to get my handle and get it engaged and pull it in. I'm just going to take the handle and just put it on here temporarily right now to kind of get her going here. And look at there. She is pulling in like she's supposed to. It's just what we want. Let me get that key on the back side uh, put back in and positioned. All right, so our plug goes in back here. There's a bunch of shims in here that have to be 
mined up just right and hopefully I can get them in there staying on there where they need to be. And I think this will get it. Well, guys, I think we're at a stopping point for this video today. I got the tailstock disassembled. We got the quill reinstalled. What's left to do to it? Um, I need to, first off, get the tailstock over to the headstock and measure how much height difference there is and see what we need to do about shimming it up. Again, I'm hoping I can just put some turkite up underneath the ways and be done with it. I just need to figure out how much we need to move it. And I've got a little bit of turkite in the shop. I don't know if it's the right thickness or not. And I won't know that until I get over there and measure it, but hopefully uh, I can use what I have. If not, I'll have to order some uh, to get that shimmed up right. Uh, we need to get it painted. Uh, there's still a little bit of restoration work on some things to do on this but uh, coming along nicely and uh, making progress. And I'm really happy, again, to have the right quill in here now that we can properly use this uh, on this machine. So guys, with that, that's gonna be a wrap. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted to the site. And uh, as always, a big, huge thank you to those who subscribe to the site as well as support the site financially through Patreon, PayPal, etc. Uh, that really helps enable me to be able to take the time to shoot the video, to edit the video, and do all the video part of this. It takes me away from working on jobs in the shop where I could be making money otherwise. So your contributions helps offset that, and it is greatly appreciated if you can do that. And uh, with that, guys... We're going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.